You don't want to fall in this? You're going to be okay. Hey everyone, I'm Matt Beer and we're here at the 2021 Pink Bike Summer Field Test in beautiful Sun Peaks. We're standing at the bottom of the impossible climb and we have five of the latest, greatest enduro bikes plus four long travel e-bikes ready to go here. Now, while the majority of the testing was done descending because we're in this great bike park, we have to talk about climbing for a little bit. And that's why we're gonna try and climb nine of these bikes up the impossible climb filled with technical obstacles to see where some of them shine and the other ones flounder. Okay, so here are the rules. We've got our control tires, the Maxxis DHR2 up front and a dissector in the back. We've had our unpaid intern, Mike Levy, inflate all the tires to the same PSI. Okay, so let's take a look at this course that I'm gonna be going up. Conditions here in Sun Peaks are pretty dry. So it's really loose. First couple things, we've got a couple polished roots here. The next move is right after, I've got to hold some speed and then lurch up this little rock. And this setup for these roots is a little bit duffy, soft and loose. This is the second last crux, another rock covered in dust. It's gonna be really interesting to see which bikes make it to here. And this is the final piece of the puzzle. It's a rutted out chute that's really loose and slippery. So if I get up to this point, it might be the possible climb. Okay, impossible climb, transition spire. Giddy up. Oh, that was a lunge. I feel the cramp coming on already. Okay, the hard part. Bad line. All the impossible climbs I've done, I've never dabbed. <laughs> Climb switch is open. Let's see how she goes. I wonder how that front end's gonna do. Be a little bit shorter. It's more nimble. Got the up. The first really hard part. This is all really steep too, so sucks your energy. But we're getting there. And the next crux. Oh! Okay. <laughs> okay, so we got the Norco range. See what this idler bike can do. Let's go. Oh, I can definitely feel that idler in the top three gears, but. Oh, trials lunge. Wouldn't be doing that with flat pedals. Whoa. Same spot. Actually, pedal's kind of decent for the idler. First crux. Yep, got the hop.
Okay, now I can feel that idler coming into play. Just a little bit more tiring. That's definitely the wrong gear. Oh boy. Oh, see? What do you think of the GT? I didn't think it felt too bad at first, yeah. but yeah, I think just when it came around that corner after the first hop, yeah. I could feel it start to pull a little bit more energy out of me. Yeah. Ooh. Just wants to punch right up there real quick. Fastest in the efficiency test or best in the efficiency test. Really light. Lower front end, which definitely helps climbing. Let's see if that dual link helps. Oh yeah. Oh, that was close. Oh, got her. So Matt, you've cleaned it on the We Are One arrival. You've yeah. talked a lot about how, not just the weight, but how efficient this bike is. And you also talked about the lower front end. Now that you've done the impossible climb, what's the story on this bike? Is that helpful stuff? Yeah, the lightweight was really noticeable. The front end definitely helped track when you're turning a lot. Yeah. Doesn't want the bike to fold backwards. Yep. And then, yeah, the suspension too, like even on the uphills, it helps just push it forward yep. over stuff. Another thing I noticed, the tight switch back there, you carried way more momentum, even more than the capper too. Like yeah. You came through there and you didn't hesitate, you just kept going. Yeah, I mean, a little bit shorter travel so it doesn't bog down. Yeah, yeah. But still tons yeah. of traction. Climbing, climb on. You really gotta manage the power on these things because they kick in and out. But once you get it dialed, it is manageable. So, good traction over that steep, loose dirt thing. Three down up here, three down. Oh, we got some enduro. Oh! Right onto the skid. Why, what happened there, Matt? Was it the weight of the bike? Like, would you have popped over that on a normal bike, do you think? No, I think the little boost helped get me further. Yeah. But yeah, it's just uh, hard to keep the front end down once that power kicks in. It wants to kind of lift off. Okay, so I'm trying to spin to keep traction consistent on all this stuff. And then for this one, I'm gonna go slow in, build up a bit of speed, lift the front wheel and hump the back wheel over that. Getting a little more technical here. And then we got the log, which is the most technical. <laughs> Dude, so close. So close. Okay, so we've got the Kinevo SL. We know that this bike is a little bit different than the others. So we've been running those ones at trail mode the whole time. And we're gonna run this one at turbo just to give it a little bit more of a chance because it does have kind of half the output of the motors of the others. But it has really good traction. So let's see how this one goes uphill. Okay, so right away you can feel that there's not as much power, but it's definitely easier than the regular non-assisted e-bikes. Almost lost it there, didn't anticipate the lack of power to push me around that corner. But I still got tons of juice for this stuff. The route's pretty easy, rear wheel's on the ground. Let's see how it does the log. <laughs> just not quite the same torque as the others yeah you, was that the difference yeah it was you know almost easier to manage in some spots yeah. didn't quite have the burst yeah. feeling but yeah one or two other places i expected a little more. bit more power yeah and i almost fell over to the inside of a corner so you've 
You've ridden the regular non-motorized bikes up this trail. You've ridden a few full-powered e-bikes up this trail. And now you're on the Kinevo SL somewhere in the middle. Yeah. Is, is this more like a normal bike with a bit of assistance or is it more like an e-bike that's underpowered? I would say it's more like an e-bike that's underpowered okay. for the uphill. Yeah, yeah. Ready to roll. Okay, so just to reiterate, we've got 25 PSI in all the rear tires on our e-bikes. Let's see how this heavier weight and longer fork does on the hop. Still gets it. Okay, going into the tech little loose uphill, the anthill. Oh, little bit of rear wheel slip. Those long chain stays aren't quite underneath me as much. Oh. <laughs> Look at that. Just wasted the log. Well, it's <laughs> Too many ponies. Ground. Yeah. That was impressive. Is that the farthest? This is the high mark for the e-bikes. It was pretty damn close. Why do you think the Norco got over that easier than the other bikes? Don't say sheer luck. Maybe the weight just helped it stay on the like lower center of gravity. Yeah. As I came up and lurched over the log. Yeah. What mode were you in? Trail mode. Yeah. Can you also speak a little bit to slow speed balance? On these e-bikes, one, one thing that I've noticed is that like when you're going real slow and you need to take a corner, you know, they feel like if you get leaning, that weight wants to pull you over. Did it feel like that at all? It didn't feel too bad. The center of gravity is pretty low. Yeah. Again, yeah, just keeping that power constant. And one thing you can do, I've heard other people say, is just keep a little bit of front brake on as Pedal you turn. against the brake. Yeah, and that just keeps the wheels turning at the same rate. I know some other mountain bikers do that too. Yeah. Even on a regular bike. And yeah, it just helps the rear wheel continue that traction and just slows down the front end. Yeah. Matt, that is another impossible climb wrapped up. This one looks like the hardest yet. Tell me about the course. Man, it was really tough out there. It's really slippery and dry yeah. and that moon dust is right on top of the rocks. There's a lot of different sections that I feel I could climb on their own, but the link them together was really challenging. Yeah, as always, it's that I can do this and this, but I didn't get this and I might be able to get that. And then there's not, there's not a lot of places to recover, is there? Definitely not. No, yeah. it's just one thing after another. Yeah, exactly. So. The only non-motorized e-bike to clean our impossible climb this time around was the We Are One Arrival. Now you guys talked a lot about this bike, it's pedaling efficiency, lower weight, it's got a little bit lower front end. On this climb, did those help? Can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, the lower front end let me keep the weight forward and the front wheel didn't wander on the steep stuff. Mm -hmm. And then that dual link suspension was really, really good up here. It just allowed me to keep the wheel on the ground. There was lots of traction, very consistent, and it kind of propelled you forward after you got over a little obstacle. Right. Okay, we should probably talk about the e-bikes. So the e-bike that got the highest, that was the Norco Range VLT. They all sort of stumbled at our big log bump over. That was very impressive. You got over that a couple times in some sort of magic way that I will never be able to do. So. It sort of also looked though that when you're climbing the e-bikes, they all kind of did the same thing. When you have a battery and a motor, do the bikes blend into each other or are there differences between them on a technical climb? Yeah, we had a couple different e-bikes on test, including that lightweight Specialized, but even between the other Shimano motors, the geometry and the travel, there are definitely some differences there. The one thing I noticed was the Norco got the farthest, but that long chain stay, sometimes I had to yep. move around on the bike when I needed to find traction. Sometimes the rear would slip a little bit and I have to shift my weight back. Yeah, you actually mentioned that when you were coming up through those, through those artificial switchbacks that we made, that I heard you talking and you were saying, oh, gotta move, gotta move a little bit, you know, and I mean, that's a 462 millimeter rear end. I think the second longest is 453. It's almost 10 mils shorter, and there's definitely a difference on the trail, I guess. Yeah, that's definitely true. You know, you kind of do that on any bike, but this one, it was a little bit more apparent. Yeah. And that Yeti was a lot easier to manage. The front end was really low. Yeah. And tons of traction out back with that six infinity switch. Okay, so super technical climb, low speed, super tight. That Turbo Kinevo SL, that thing is, 10 pounds lighter than some of these other e-bikes, but helps you less. What is easier when it's really low speed, really tech? 
Yeah, the low speed stuff on the Kinevo, it was a lot easier to like shift my weight or like punch up, lurch up these little steps that we have on the uphill track. Yep. So that definitely showed it was a little bit more like a normal bike, a little bit more manageable there. All right, there you go. Those are our two winners for the impossible climb at the 2021 summer field test. That's We Are One's new arrival and the equally new Norco Range VLT. Should we go do some more climbing? We're in Sun Peaks. Let's do some downhill. Okay, yeah, let's get on the lift and do some laps. Yeah. 